Kurt Volker, former U.S. ambassador to NATO. And, you know, China's largest newspaper, first of all, thanks for joining us. Uh, and China's largest newspaper reported Tuesday that uh, President Xi Jinping, the leader of the military, told the army to focus on being battle ready, saying this, quote, direct all work towards warfare and speed up uh, to build the ability to win, carry out military struggles, shape the security posture, contain cruises and conflicts, and win local wars. Is this posturing for war or preparation for something else? Right. I think that this is a message to his own military. Don't be like Russia. Don't lie to me. Don't say that you're ready for war and turn out to be a paper tiger. I want you to be a real military so that if there is a time when China needs to be in a conflict or chooses to be in a conflict, the military is ready. I think he's learning some lessons from Russia's failures in Ukraine. Is it also a message, you think, to the U.S.? Uh, I think it is. I, I think he, want, he wants the U.S. not to be jubilant about uh, Ukraine successes against Russia. He doesn't want us to overestimate our own strength. He wants us to fear that China will have a real military capability. So it's also brushing the U.S. back. But I think this is actually a message of uh, patience, saying build mm. your strength rather than a message of aggression, meaning use it now. Mm, interesting. So the president's going into this meeting saying, our president, President Biden, saying on Wednesday that he will ask China where the red lines are and then try to negotiate from there. Is that a position of strength for the U.S.? No, I don't, I don't think that's the right way to uh, approach talking about it. We shouldn't be asking China for red lines. We shouldn't be accepting red lines. We should be talking about principles. We should be talking about principles of freedom of navigation, first of all, of the respect for international waters, respect for the territorial integrity of other countries, respect for agreements that have been reached. And those are the things that we should say we stand by and we expect China to stand by those as well. Yeah, but if they don't feel any consequences, I mean, the phase one trade deal is a good example of that. They didn't follow it. Uh, you, you know, what, what does China really fear here? Yeah, I, I think we have to be careful about imposing consequences on China for fear of some escalation that's not necessary. I think there are ways to push back and get them to respect the lines. But I do think we have to be very firm. We have to be very clear. There are rules here. There are established practices. We have rights here. Other countries have rights here. We don't accept a Chinese unilateral diktat. Uh, but respecting that China has its own interests. We want there to be stability, not to escalate into a conflict. So then is there something tangible that the U.S. needs to get out of this meeting on Taiwan or origins of COVID or stealing U.S. technology or, or all of it? Yeah. Uh, and when it comes to any individual thing, whether it's COVID or technology, or whatever, I don't think you're going to see anything come out of this meeting at all. China is not going to agree to something. I'm not even sure we know what we would expect and, and get them to do. But I think what should come out of this is a sense that China respects the United States. Uh, we were, I think we were seen to be re relatively weak, especially after the withdrawal from Afghanistan, a lack of resolve. We were seen to be relatively weak because of uh, domestic uh, elections and the political situation here. I think that we need President Biden to come away from this meeting having gotten some respect from China. So Republican lawmakers plan to introduce legislation to effectively ban the Chinese-owned app TikTok. And the FCC commissioner has called on a ban as well as uh, over national security concerns. You know, what do you think about the tens of millions of Americans that are using that app? Well, I think it's important to tell those Americans that China uses TikTok as a vacuum cleaner to scoop up all of their personal data and to make them vulnerable for any kind of attacks or compromise of personal information in the future. So it is not so much a matter of harming Americans who like TikTok. It's actually an opportunity for America to help protect its citizens against China that seeks to use this type of app to collect information that can be harmful. Yeah, and in the last 30, 30 seconds that we have, um, you know, are you concerned they're using facial recognition technology to put together? Uh, or are you, are, do you think they are actually doing that, but using facial rec to put together did, a profile on Americans, high profile or not? Look, yeah, we know that they are doing that at home to their own population. 
They are gathering that facial recognition data and using it to try to enforce social conformity within China. I think we do have to be concerned that they will be collecting similar data through apps like TikTok, but we just don't know how they will be able to use that internationally yet, but we ought to be vigilant about it. Kurt Volker, I appreciate it. Former ambassador to NATO, thank you for your time.